The Inn of Donkeys. Old Chow, the merchant, had travelled all over China and thought he knew all the inns and hotels in the country. One day, however, he found himself in a strange district and stopped to ask a farmer where he could find the nearest inn. Just over the hill, the farmer told him. You'll find a very comfortable inn and you can even buy donkeys there. Really? exclaimed Chow. I must say it's time I bought a new beast. My old donkey is growing rather tired. Where do the donkeys come from? The farmer looked worried and said, uh, Well, uh, I don't know. You can ask Third Lady, the innkeeper. Chow thanked the man and rode on over the hill. At last he saw the wooden bridge inn. Getting off his donkey, he went inside the inn. Third Lady greeted him warmly. I'm afraid I have no servants and must ask you to take your donkey to the stables yourself. But I'll prepare a meal and a bed for you. That night, Chow sat down with the six other guests to a delicious meal. Third Lady brought bottles of wine to the table. The six guests drank a great deal before falling wearily into their beds. But Chow did not drink any of the wine and lay wide awake on his clean, soft bed. Just as he was dozing off, he was woken by the sound of a heavy thump. Fearing burglars were breaking into the inn, he peeped through a gap in the bamboo partition. To his surprise, he saw a third lady dragging a heavy trunk across the earthen floor. He watched as she took some little carved figures from the trunk. Then she placed them on the floor. There was a man, an ox, and a plough. Third lady hitched the plough behind the ox and set the man behind the plough. Then she sprinkled some water over them and murmured some magic words. To Chow's astonishment, the little team began to move rapidly around the room. In no time at all, the earthen floor had been ploughed into neat furrows. Third lady then placed a tiny basket of seeds into the wooden man's hand. No sooner had he planted the seeds than fresh shoots of wheat appeared. Chow watched amazed as Third Lady gathered up the wheat, crushed it into flour and made little wheat cakes from the flour. Chow was so troubled by this magic that he could not sleep. At last, as the sun peeped into his room, he packed his things. But just as he was about to leave the inn, Third Lady greeted him. I... Have some delicious wheat cakes for your breakfast, she said. Won't you stay? Why, thank you, said Chow. Do you mind if I just take one with me? I'm in a great hurry. He slipped the cake into his pocket and went to the stable to get his donkey. But he thought he would take just one more look at Third Lady before setting off. Peeping through the window, he saw her offering the little wheat cakes to the other guests. He watched them eat. In amazement, he saw them roll upon the floor. Their clothes changed into rough grey fur. They grew long tails and big ears. Chow could not believe his eyes. The room was filled not with men, but with donkeys. Leaping onto his donkey, he scuttled away from the inn as fast as he could. Chow did not stop until he reached the nearest city. And although his work kept him busy, he could not forget Third Lady and her strange and terrible magic. When he had to leave the city, Chow bought six little cakes made of wheat. Packing these into one bag and the cake he had taken from Third Lady in another, he set off. He took the same road home as before and once again stopped at the Wooden Bridge Inn. Again, Third Lady gave him a warm welcome. And again, when Chow got up in the morning, Third Lady offered him some wheat cakes. 
Ah, said Chow, I thought I would bring you some wheat cakes. Do have one of mine. With a scowl on her face, Third Lady took the cake Chow handed her. But the cake Third Lady took was the one she had given Chow on his first visit. No sooner had she eaten half than she rolled upon the floor and turned into a donkey. Chow was delighted. He pushed Third Lady out of the kitchen and tethered her to a tree. Then he hurried back to the inn and went to her bedroom and opened the trunk. Taking out the wooden toys, he burnt the little carved man, the ox, and the plough. And from that day on, until the end of his life, Third Lady proved to be a good, strong donkey, and gave Chow very good service on his long travels through China. <laughs>